So I know you didn't, we're doing area, but you've done area before. I will give candy to people who know who can tell me one of these formulas. Oh, we got a couple of takers. Go for it. Which one do you have? Where is base times height? Oh, so close. That actually technically works, so you can get candy. But that's not the formula I was looking for. Okay, what do you have? Length times width. For what? For square. For square, also not the one I was looking for. Thank you, though. Please go get some candy. Now, people keep doing length times width, and I keep shooting it down. Or base times height. What one is that one really for? Rectangle. Rectangle. No. Oh, yeah. So the area of a rectangle is length times width. Notice that I have used a cursive L here. How come? All right. So it doesn't look like a 1. That says area, and then I put R-E-C-T for rectangle, so I knew what it was the formula for. Shh. Get in the habit, actually, with these area formulas, of labeling them which one you're doing. So, does it matter which one you make length and which one you make width? Yeah. No. No, because no, it doesn't matter what order you multiply stuff in. And so if you had it this way, oh, that would be length and that, it doesn't matter. Most people tend to do the longer one as length, but it really doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, well, yeah, well, that's not so hard. I'm sure I'll find a way to make it harder, though. Okay, what's another one you know? Um, square is length squared of like the okay. size. Okay, and why would it be squared? Because as all the square, all sides of a square are equal, so it's just times each other, so you just put the square symbol, because it's easier to put. Yeah, so since a square has all sides the same, let's do S for side. If I did length times width here, since it's a type of rectangle, I would do S times S, which is S squared. So the area of a square is S squared. Yes? Uh, oh, wait, you have a different formula? Yeah. Okay, first let me check. Anybody have any questions or comments or complaints or concerns about squares? Okay. You're like, how is Mrs. Cerna going to make that harder? Oh, don't worry, it gets harder. It does? Oh, yes. Another one. Yes? Triangle is base times height divided by 2. Triangle, so the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. Okay, another way you could write that is one half base times height. Those are exactly the same thing, just written in slightly different formats. What's the trick about this one? Well, the thing is, is area is counting squares, right? You're literally counting how many squares fit inside something. Squares have perpendicular sides. They have right angles. So all of these formulas have to involve right angles. But does every triangle have right angles? No. 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 But you can draw an altitude, and that's going to be your height. And then your base is just whatever side that altitude is going to. Does the height have to be measured inside the triangle? No. No. You could have this guy right here, and have this be your base, but then the height has to be perpendicular to it, and the perpendicular to that is actually over there. Okay? And so you just have to, you know, make sure you've always got something going perpendicular. Like, okay, that's, that's not so bad. Are there any others anybody knows that are on here that you already know the formula for? If you get it right, you get the candy, even if I don't use it. Um. Yes. If you get it wrong, it's not like anything happens to you. Uh, yeah, radius 2. That's oh, five. that is not one of these formulas. <laughs> yes. Uh, radius 5. I don't know what the heck you're going what, what shape is it going oh, for? Circle. Circle. Radius, circle? Pi. radius pi. Radius pi, no. Radius pi squared. But pi around. Oh. 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 The area of a circle. Oh. Go get your candy. Oh. Is pi r squared. Oh. Yeah. Square, but round. Like, like the Okay. And of course, R stands for radius. radius. Now, the thing is, is remember how we've talked about where you can round sometimes and where sometimes I want exact answers? If I want an exact answer with pi, how am I going to do that? 
Leave it as pi. So if I tell you I want an exact answer for this, it would be something pi instead of multiplying by the 3.141596 blah, 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 blah on forever. Okay. Oh, I had somebody in my last class, I had to cut them off at 20 digits. Okay. I know 100. Okay. I know 100 digits as well. See, 100. Oh, uh, you got <laughs> Okay. Any other of these formulas that anybody knows? You've learned at least two more of these. Which means technically you've learned a third one as well, but nobody wants to give it a try? Okay, you're, you're willing to go for another one. Uh, parallelogram, pi r squared, under 2? No. <laughs> pi goes with circles, but nice try. Got it done. Got it done. Okay, shh, shh, shh. He has a good question. He says, for a trapezoid, he asks, would that be base times height? Well, the problem is, is how many bases does a trapezoid have? <laughs> two. You call one of them base 1, and you call one of them base 2. Now, if I did base times height... On this, which base should I use? Oh, the average. Because if I use the if I use the little one, it'll be too small. If I use the big one, it'll be too big. I average them, which is basically what we did when we found the mid segment. So for a trapezoid, it's the mid segment times the height. Okay, but you don't write that. For the area of a trapezoid, you tell me, well, how do you get the mid-segment? Well, I will average my bases. So there's your mid-segment formula. And so that average of bases gets times by the height to give you the area. Yes? Are you doing another formula, or are we still on this one? Okay, well, let's make sure everybody's got this one, okay? And so when you do the trapezoid one here, I recommend, you know, Writing your formula down first so you don't accident, because the biggest mistake people make is they get going fast on these is they accidentally times these mm -hmm. instead of adding them. So just be really careful about that and don't forget to multiply by the height. Because if you just do this part, that's the length of your mid-segment. You need to times by the height to get that area. And that height needs to be perpendicular, okay? All the same people. This is getting boring. Nobody else so wants candy? Go. Okay, with the way you're holding your pencil and stuff, um, Sean, just now, the way you held your pencil and stuff right now toward me? Yeah. But you were like this, buddy. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Why are you doing that? I, I'm just telling you how it looked out of the corner of my eye. I know you weren't doing anything, but that's how it looked. I'm not. Yes. Um, equal lateral triangle. Is? Uh, side squared. Over no, it's not. It's but not. Shh, you're on the right track. So draw an equilateral triangle. How do you make sure I know it's equilateral? Uh, congruent line. Mark the sides congruent. And I'm going to say that all of them are length s. Now the thing is, is if I want to find area, I need a perpendicular here. And I'm lazy. I don't want to have to do that every single time. So you don't have to write what I'm about to write, but I'm going to put it on this sticky note so that people on the video can see it. If I have that equilateral triangle and I draw an altitude to it, is that legal? Yes. And since it's equilateral, what's going to happen to this angle up here? It's going to be bisected. Now, how big are the angles in an equilateral triangle? 60 degrees. 60 degrees. They're all 60, which means these are both 30. Degrees. 30. 30. Okay. Shh. And so now I have a 30, 60, 90 right here. Do you want to have to do that every single time you're given an equilateral triangle? No. So watch this. We're going to do it once and create a formula so that we don't have to redo it every time. This is why mathematicians make formulas, because we're lazy. And so we go, okay, if this is a 30, 60, 90, I'm going to have a short, a short root 3, and a 2 times the short. Which one do I already know? I know the one across from the right angle. And it's S. So how big 
big would this little guy here be across from the 30? It would be half S. So how big then would this across from the 60 be? Half S root 3, which is ugly, but it's usable. So if I go into my area of a triangle formula and do 1 half base times height, what is the length of this base of my equilateral triangle? Well, how big are all the sides of it? S. What is that height we just found? One half S root three. So then you can simplify this. What's a half times a half? Fourth. A fourth. Okay. And so then that's just like dividing by four, right? What's S times S? 2S. Nope, that's S plus S. Oh, S it's going to be S squared and then the root 3. Wait, so do I get candy? Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't already go get it. Okay, so for an equilateral triangle, we now have a formula that does not need a height in it. It's built in with these numbers. So for your area of your equilateral triangle, it's going to be take a side and square it, root 3. Oh, oh that's not supposed to be 2. What's it supposed to be? 4. Four. Four. Your brain wants to do the 2 because you've been dividing by 2, but see how I've squared it? And so what's, so what's two, what is the 2 squared going to give you on bottom? 4. Four. Okay. So that's your formula for an equilateral triangle. No height needed because it's built in to these numbers. Okay. So you do have to memorize these on the day of the test. If you don't have them memorized, are you going to do them right on your test? No. no. So here's how we've gotten around that. Right before the test, you're going to take, I shouldn't see your gum. You're going to take a quick quiz over these formulas. I'll just have you fill in nine blanks and turn it in. I will grade it as a quiz right there. But then, if you get them all right, you take it back and that's your formula chart. If you get any wrong, I put the correct formula on it and give it back to you as a formula chart. So then will your bad formulas screw up your test grade? No. 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 See why we do it that way? Yeah. If you screw it up, it only affects you on a quiz instead of on a test. Oh, See? Oh, thank you. We're out to, we're out to get you. That'd be so confusing. Well, that's okay. You don't have to understand it. Just smile and nod. Okay? Okay, any of these other formulas you know? Because if, if you don't tell them to me, we have to figure them out like we did the equilateral triangle. Oh, uh, that's boring. What? Uh, type R squared uh, no. plus pi. No. There's no radius nor is there pi. <laughs> yes? Kite. Uh, what about it? <laughs> you know the formula? I think so. You think so, huh? What, what do you think? One's fun? Okay, is it, uh, oh, it, oh, he's cheating? How would I be cheating? I don't know. He says you're cheating. Okay, one half base times height times two. Well, you're on the right track because, shh, remember back when we first learned about kites and we said that it was two triangles, didn't we? Yeah. Shh. And so this triangle would be one half base times this height. And this triangle would be one half base times that height. But isn't the base in both of them just this diagonal? Yeah. yeah and don't the two heights together just make this other diagonal? Yeah. So the area of a kite, the diagonals are perpendicular. So it's just one half diagonal one times diagonal two. So do I get candy? That, instead of base times height, you use diagonal one and diagonal two. Use close but it's half because it's two triangles. Close enough, right? No. Close only counts in horseshoes, hand grenades, and thermonuclear weapons. 
Yes. Does the name of like a, like a kite come from like no. the ones you fly, or do we name the ones we fly it, after it, the shape? Not really sure. That would be a fun thing for you to investigate. Then let me know because I'm curious. I will. Okay. <laughs> now, where was where did the right angle? that we always need to use in finding area come in in a kite? Mm -hmm. Where was oh, the right angle? The, uh, they're the diagonals they're are perpendicular. perpendicular. They're not both bisectors, only one bisects oh, in a kite. Okay? So the diagonals of a kite were perpendicular. Shh. And so we used that to get the formula. Does anything else also Use perpendicular diagonals that might. Parallelogram. Oh, which is it? Is it rhombus or parallelogram? That's the parallelogram. It's the rhombus. A rhombus has the four congruent sides, so it has perpendicular diagonals. But wait a minute, wouldn't that cause the same thing to happen? I'd have a diagonal being the base for two triangles and the other diagonal being the height because it's perpendicular. So the area for a rhombus, since it has those perpendicular diagonals, is the exact same as the kite. Oh, that's convenient. That is, that um, They're the same formula. Oh, wait, but which one's D1 and which one's D2? Uh, it doesn't matter. Because either way, you're just going to multiply. It's just like if I did height base. Okay, it doesn't matter which order you do it in, so it doesn't matter which one you do first. Okay. Eric, oh! But we still haven't done the parallelogram, and I'm honestly surprised nobody has already told me this one. Because you've just got this big old long fella here. Oh, are there any right angles there? No. So where would I make a right angle? The diagonals wouldn't make right angles. They're not perpendicular. Altitudes. So I could either make an altitude out here, or I could make an altitude in there. Those would give me heights, but then what does the height go to? The base. One half. The base. Oh, I got it. So what's the formula for the area of a parallelogram? Uh, B H. Base times height. <laughs> yeah. Kenny? Why don't we divide it by two? It's not a triangle. Because it's not a triangle. I can't. B H. A triangle is half a parallelogram. So that's why it gets half base times height. A parallelogram is a full parallelogram, so it gets all of base times height. <laughs> and there are the nine formulas you get to memorize. You're welcome. But hey, you're going to remember that these two are the same because they both have perpendicular diagonals. You already knew this one probably and that one and probably that one. Most of you knew circles, so there's really only a couple of new ones here. And did you notice that really the rectangle one is really the same as the parallelogram one, isn't it? Because the base here and the height just happen to be the legs. So you could put base times height for rectangle as well. It just happens that the height and the base are the length and the width. But the formula I'm looking for is LW, but I won't mark it wrong if you put BH because it's literally the same thing in a rectangle. You're like, oh, that's not so bad. And so since this is an honor class, of course, we have to figure out how to way to make it bad. Because you must suffer. And yes, I am seeing the faces of suffering. You are? Yes. Oh, I saw the... <gasps> and so I know suffering is going on. Shh. But tell you what. For most of these, we won't work them all the way through. We're just going to see some tips and tricks and how to set them up so you don't screw them up. Otherwise, you know the algebra. You can do the algebra. The trick is figuring out how to set them up. So for this first guy, what do you got here? Uh, You've got a trapezoid. So you would be finding the area of a trapezoid. Shh. And so you'd go, okay, I need one half. I need to average my bases and then times by the height. Cool. That's not so bad. I can do this. But of course, I can't make it that easy. What's your base one? 
that's two. What's your base two? Thanks for coming. Trick. But do I need to go that far? Wait, no. You need trick, right? How am I gonna find this? You can I can drop this parallel here. Oh, by the way, hey, stop. By the way, that cuts this into a rectangle and a triangle. Couldn't I just find the area of the rectangle and the area of the triangle and add them? Yes, sure, but since we've already started with the trapezoid formula, we'll continue. Now, how tall is this? It's the six still. It matches because that's a rectangle. So how big is this down here? It's going to be two. Now, what I need to figure out is how big this piece is using this right triangle. Uh, oh. But do you notice anything special about that right triangle? I've got a 90 and a 45, so this will have to be a 45. So I have congruent base angles. So what kind of triangle do I have now? Isosceles. So if this one is 6, that means a lot of one. this other one is 6. <laughs> it is. So how big now is my base 2 going to be? It's eight. And then how big is my height? It's that six you had already found. Notice how I wrote the formula down and then I plugged the numbers into it underneath it. I had to do some work off to the side, but I was able to do this here. I highly recommend you do this. Highly. Because it gets complicated. Okay? What's the area of it? 30. 30. And that would get you half credit. Because it's naked. Square. And since it's area, you're always counting squares. So it will be square feet. Shh. Hey. Set me up for number two. What shape do you have on number two? Height. Height. So what's that formula? Uh, one, one. one half. Diagonal one. Diagonal one. Two. Diagonal two. Okay. So the area of that height is one half. I need just two numbers. So what's my diagonal one going to be? Uh, Twelve. Twenty. Which is it? Twelve or twenty? Twenty. Twenty. It's going to be twenty. Can you? No. What about my other diagonal? Five. I'm going to have to use. I'm going to have to use the property that kites have perpendicular diagonals to find the other side of that right triangle there. And if you happen to know that it's a Pythagorean triple, you discover that it's five. But wait, shh. Is that my full diagonal? No. That's just this top half. But remember, it's going to be bisected. So how big is this bottom piece? It's the same. So how big is the full diagonal 2? It's 10. So see how, see how I made you have to do a little bit of work before you could just plug junk into the formula? That's the rest of your life. You're welcome. And so the area of the kite, well, what's half of 20? 10. Times 10. And, and this would be half right. Unit square. Unit square. Yeah. If, uh, in this unit, you will leave no areas naked. So you can either put units squared, or you can get lazy and just put u squared. But don't leave your areas naked. Okay. What have I thrown at you in figure three? You didn't give us um, you you give 30. 90. 30. What shape is oh, it? It's a rhombus. Uh, it's a rhombus. Yeah. So what's the formula for the area of a rhombus? One half d1 d2 again. What's the problem there? Uh, we don't know the size of We don't know the all the links. I don't know all the links. This is four diagonals. Well, I know all of these are 14. 
more diagonals. But I don't know either of my diagonals. Ah, but see, here's where you have to know your properties from last unit. Yes. If you know that your diagonals are perpendicular, then you know that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I can come down here, do 30, 60, 90, and do a short and a short root 3 and a 2 short. And which piece do I have? You have the you have the, the one opposite the 90. Yeah. So That's the two short. So how big is my short side? Seven, 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 three, that is this guy across from the 30, but it's a rhombus. What's true about the diagonals of a rhombus other than, than being perpendicular? They bisect. they bisect. So how big is my first diagonal? 14. It's 14. So I can put a 14 in there. But now... How big is this blue guy? Uh, this guy, well, in here it's 14 root 3 for this side, which makes this one 14 root 3 as well. Oh, who's, uh, who, it, was, it was either Presley or Haley. Thank you. Y'all were on top of that one. That was awesome. Okay. So, okay, hold on. What's what's seven dogs plus seven dogs? Fourteen dogs. What's seven fish plus seven fish? Fourteen fish. What's seven roots plus seven roots? Fourteen roots. So, if they're root threes, it'll be fourteen root threes. Wow. I never thought of it that way. Wow. Yeah. Well, now we have to simplify. But we have to leave it in exact form, so, um, yeah, don't take rid of the root 3. So what's half of 14? Seven. Times 14. 98. 98? So it'll be 98. What about the root 3? Just slap it on the slap end. Slap it on the end, and you would be half right. What? Unit squared. Unit squared. Okay. So all this old stuff is still coming into play here. What's going to happen in this one? We're not going to work this one all the way through. We're just going to battle plan. Battle plan? We got more notes. Well, what should I do first? Label. Label all the crap. So, shh, which one is base one and which one's base two? How do you know base one's at the top? Because it's the smaller number. Now, could I use the trapezoid formula? Yes. I could. Could I break it up into a rectangle and a triangle? Either way, what's the problem? I don't know this height. If I did the trapezoid, I have base 1 and base 2, but I still don't have the height. If I do it as a rectangle and triangle, I still don't have the height. I, I would love to do trig here with this triangle, but do I know how long this piece is? How did you know it's 14? Because you drew this parallelogram here, and that's 10. So this needs to be 14. And then which trig function would I use to find that height? Tan tangent? So I'd be doing the tangent of 42 would equal opposite over adjacent. Shh. You would do that. You would find your height. And then you could plug it in and do whatever. Do you want to do that right this second? No, no so you turn the page. I told you we're just going to do the battle plan. I would like everybody to do number five on your paper. Everybody, work number five on your paper. What evil, diabolical thing have I done here? I only gave you letters. But you know algebra. You know how to work with numbers. You mean letters? But they're just numbers. They're just disguised as letters. They're incognito. 
can't. Oh, that's right. Yay. So could you? Well, I know it's a kite. Could you so pretend yeah. like AS5? No. AS5? no. Okay. Because it could be any number. So you know it's going to be one half diagonal, one diagonal two. So the area of my kite will be one half. I just need two numbers here. Come on, y'all. What is my diagonal one? Uh, a. Oh, it's C. Oh, that wasn't so bad. What's my diagonal two? A plus B. Oh, it's got the A and the B, so it's A plus B. Okay. Don't freak out just because they're letters. You're not done, though. This this has parentheses. Can I simplify this? I, 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 don't, I think so. Yeah. So I'm going to have the area of the kite is one half of what C times the A? AC or CA. And then plus what C times the B? CB. I'm sorry, it's glaring. But then it. No, 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 what about it? What? But then it gets dark over here. Can you? Can you move, bud? Is that better? And then you go, okay, so then the area of the kite, what's the same as multiplying by a half? Uh, dividing by two. So I could do CA plus CB divided by two. That's it. That's all you can do. But that's how formulas are created, is by generalizing the stuff with the numbers. Okay? Okay, yeah, you got the idea. I'll probably throw something like that at you at the homework, but now you know what to do. Look at number seven. Oh, we got to draw right here. What should you do here? Draw the pretty picture. Does it matter which one you make the length and the width? Nope. Oh, what did I do differently here? I already gave you the area. So what are we trying to find? How? You're still just plugging it into the formula, but I gave you the area. So the area of a rectangle was just what? Length times width? So I'll do, what was the area of my rectangle? Yeah, it's 44. So I'm just going to put 44 equals my length is x plus 3 and my width is 2x plus 3. And then do I know how to solve for x? Do you know how to solve for x? Yeah, that's a quadratic. So you could do the quadratic formula or maybe you can cross your fingers that it factors. Do you want to do all that? No, you don't. But you're going to get two answers eventually. And when you do get the two answers, one of them comes out to be 2.5, and the other comes out to be negative 7. Okay? Done? No. No. Why not? I have to find those dimensions. I have to find the length, and I have to find the width. When all else fails, read the instructions. Okay? And so what would, it doesn't matter which one you pick. So if I use the x plus 3, and I use the negative 7, what do I get? Negative 4. Can I have negative sides? No. No, so that answer is not usable. So you put in the 2.5. 2.5 plus 3. 5.5, sure. And we'll call that one the length for giggles. And then what would 2 times the 2.5 be? Plus the 3. So make sure on these that you solve the whole problem. I did, yeah, and you're going to have to do all the work on your homework, but I just did it here because we don't have a zillion years to do it. Okay? Um, number 8 is just plugging stuff in. Ooh, number 9. Ew. That's not any of the shapes we know, is it? We had just used the E word. So now we have to do harder problems? Yes. No, 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 no. Homework is a harder problem. Since it's so easy, what do we do? Oh my. You start with the triangle, that's a rectangle, then easy. Cut off the 
triangle. What's special about this triangle I have cut off? It's a 45-45. Oh, but wait a minute. How long are the sides of that 45-45? Uh, a minus C. One what? Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. the terms of because see, A here is the whole thing. Yeah, so it's A minus A minus. So how about this C. little piece is C. So this little piece would be A minus C. So you get to have a good time playing with letters there. Do you want to do the whole thing now? No. 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 But now you know this one would be another one where you're using letters, and you're going to have to figure stuff out. Now for question 10, everybody has to pick a side. When you look at question 10 and you decide to solve this, how many of you see this as breaking it into three rectangles and adding them up? How many see it that way? Me. Okay, cool. Perfectly legit. How many of you see it as finding one big rectangle and taking out a piece? Does it matter which way you do? No. Sometimes there's more than one way to tackle it. Some people would see this as doing, oh, this is a 4 by 9, which is 36. If this is 6, how big is this piece? 3. So 3 times 4 would be 12. And then 6 times 9? 54. And then I could find my area by adding area 1 plus area 2 plus area 3. But I'm lazy. I don't want to do that much work. How big is the whole area of the whole thing going to be? It's going to be 4 and 4 and 6, which is 14, times 9, which is 126, minus the 24 from that little rectangle, which is 102. Either way, it's the same answer, but that would only get me half credit. Because it would have to be units squared. I truly do not care which way you do it. Okay? Okay, number 11. We're not going to solve it. We're going to plan it. How? Well, we, not until we get through this next one. Oh, that was Shh. <laughs> Look at number 11. What shapes do we have in number 11? A baseball. We got a four-point. We got a baseball. Which is a what? Quarter circle. It's a quarter circle. So the area of that little quarter circle, that sector, is going to be, if it's a quarter circle, it's going to be pi r squared. But then I only want a fourth of it. So it's a quarter of a circle. That's crazy. And then over here, what do you have? You've got a triangle. It will be one half base times height. Now, would you have to do some work to figure out what these pieces are on the triangle? Yeah. Well, yeah. And so you would do some work, and you'd have to use your 45, 45, 90. How did I know it was 45, 45? They're congruent. So you would have to do all that. But then what would you do once you got these two numbers? You would have to add them to get your answer. Okay? So if you plan out ahead what you're going to do, you're less likely to forget to finish the problem. How would you tackle number 12? Uh, this circle is a You do the whole rectangle and then do oh, six circles. And then okay. It's two circles. What is, I'm supposed to find the area of the shaded. What shape is that shaded stuff? It's a rectangle. So I'm going to do the area of a rectangle, which is base times height. But is the whole rectangle shaded? No. No. What got taken out? Six circles. Six circles. So minus the area of six circles, which is what? Six pi r squared? Yep. And I know I'm going to subtract it out because those are holes in here. Now is where you can then go off to the side and figure out, okay, what is this area? Go find it out. What is this area? Go find it out. And then find your total 
area at the end. By the way, what is my radius? Three. How, okay, somebody just said three, don't talk. How do you find that three? <clears throat> well, notice this is 12, right? Mm -hmm. How many circles are there? Two. So this one is six, and this one is six. So that's a diameter. But that's a diameter. A radius will be how much? Three and three and three and three. But wait! Radii go in any direction, don't they? Yeah. So this diameter would be six, and this diameter would be six, and this diameter would be six. So how big is the whole base? Eighteen. Eighteen. And those would be the numbers you could use in your formulas. Okay? So you have to start seeing ways to break stuff down. Okay. So on this last one now, break it down for me. What shapes make my shaded area here? I have a rectangle. This guy right here. Oh, but that's a nice thing. Do we trust the picture? No. No. See how it says those are right angles? By golly, it's a rectangle. So you go the area of the rectangle would be length times width. So you'd solve that. What else do I have in here? I have a rhombus, AFGH. So this guy right here is a rhombus, which will be one half D1, D2. And then what else do I have in this picture? A half circle. A half circle. So the area of my half circle would be half pi r squared. And then what else do you have? This shape. What sh you can either do it as a trapezoid or another rectangle. Or another rectangle in a right triangle. Do I care which one you do? No. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put area of a trapezoid, which is one half B1 plus B2 times height. Oh my gosh. Okay. So you would have to find these four areas. And then add them all up to get your total. Very tedious work. Yes, it's going to be tedious. You're welcome. Do we have one of these on our homework? Probably. So I'm going to give you the remaining 20 some odd minutes to go ahead and get started on the homework.